somewhere out of the tapestry of time and out of the skeleton of space and out of the limitations of our comprehension there was a fracture a fracture in the void that set everything in motion birthing what we call time stretching endlessly along with it a heartbeat of existence an echo of harmony from disarray so here we are trying to unravel the patterns and mechanics of this space our curiosity and creativity took us so far we witnessed our capabilities before us both good and bad however there is one thing that challenged the limitations of our very creative minds a thing that humbled our scientists and philosophers and it is very doubtful that there will come a time where we will understand its nature perhaps this obsession stems from the fact that we can't escape the clutches of time we know that our time here on earth is criminally limited it's a losing game for every being and for every object our ancestors were no less obsessed with it than us from 3200 BC they were using time capsules a time capsule refers to an object being reserved for later generations it could be a tool a script or a painting so that the people in the future when they open this time capsule and take a look at the object they will have an idea about what life was back then and we even do it on personal level in a lot of ways now let's move forward a little bit in modern time we have modern tools do these tools help us understand what time is these tools are our brains our strongest asset and no it's still unable to give a comprehensive answer about what time is Isaac Newton thought that time is absolute follows a constant rate everywhere in the universe his theories were applicable and successful in that time and in that era the cracks in his theory began to form in the 20th century where it was proven that time is affected by the speed of the object and the gravitational force which was also proven by practical evidence in 1971 scientists put atomic cesium clocks on commercial airlines and compared it to stationary atomic clocks on earth after the experiment they observed that time moved slower on the clocks that were on the planes and that's because time dilates or stretches for moving objects relativity worked so well in explaining the behavior of objects in space or to be more precise larger scale bodies and velocities and distances around the same time the quantum theory was gaining attention which as you have guessed by now it's conflicted to an extent with the other theories in the quantum world the behavior of particles with respect to time follows a totally different rule or set of rules the main idea here is that these particles can exist in multiple states at once which is superposition making events happen without a timeline or clear sequence of events some theories even suggest that time may not exist on this scale and as you have guessed again there are practical applications for this theory for example the quantum computers quantum computers use this property of superposition to do some tasks that other ordinary computers would struggle to achieve which makes it impractical so since the more we study time the more paradoxical it gets and the rules of logic itself seem to be dysfunctional it's safe to conclude that our battle with time or to be precise against time is a losing one so what can we do well ironically the answer might not be found in a document of a physicist or a book of a philosopher rather between the lines of a poem in the words of william blake to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower 
Hold infinity in the palm of your hands and eternity in an hour. Unquote. Maybe the only possible move is to realize how small we are and how our understanding of the universe is even smaller. This quote is about vision, how we don't need to have a full picture. The grain of sand is a small part of a greater wall. The beauty of a flower is just a taste of what heaven feels like. And while you can't have the privilege of eternity, you still have the privilege of experiencing it through the time given to you. You can't add more time, but you can add more quality to it by insight and exposure to different ideas, different stories, different cultures, a glimpse to the history, and so on. It's not a solution or an answer, but it's the only available option. Because everything that we know as humans is under the mercy of time, whether it's alive or inanimate. There is a Latin phrase that describes this. Tempus edax rerum, which basically means time devours all.